The Ministry of Health or MOH says travellers who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 now have the option to quarantine at home when they arrive in Malaysia. The ministry said via its social media platforms today that it will start accepting applications via its portal moh.gov.my from 8am tomorrow. It said travellers arriving from September 28th onwards are required to apply through the new portal. Applications must be made 7 to 10 days prior to the date of entry into Malaysia and will be processed within seven working days. However, they will need to test negative for COVID-19 via a PCR test and their home or residence must be deemed suitable based on MOH's risk evaluation. Separately, Tourism, Arts and Culture Minister Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri says the government is discussing the possibility of allowing interstate tourism and will announce the decision soon. She said the move is aimed at expediting the recovery of the country's tourism industry, which has been badly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. She was responding to a question in Parliament from more MP Syed Sadiq Syed Abdurrahman, who asked the government to open up more domestic travel bubbles and not just focus on resort islands. Nancy said several locations have been identified for this purpose, including Fraser's Hill and Genting Highlands. Two MACC officers testified today that senior lawyer Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah had told them he used the money obtained from then-PM Datuk Sri Najib Raza in 2013 to pay for a three-storey bungalow in the capital. Muhammad Nasharuddin Amir and Zulfaka Muhammad Khalil are prosecution witnesses in Shafi's 9.5 million ringgit money laundering and income tax evasion trial. They told the Kuala Lumpur High Court that Shafi had said this when they were recording his statements. He also allegedly told them the sum was not payment for his services rendered in Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim's sodomy to appeal. Instead, it was for services rendered for acting for BN in several election petition cases between 2004 and 2006. According to Zulfaka, Shafi had said that he told Najib when they met on September 5, 2013, that the actual cost for the legal fees was 11.5 million ringgit. He also allegedly informed the then PM that he needed 9.5 million ringgit to purchase the house at Bukit Tunku. According to Zulfaka, Shafi had claimed that Najib had asked the lawyer to take the 9.5 million ringgit first via two cheques of 4.3 million ringgit and 5.2 million ringgit. The 9.5 million ringgit, Shafi allegedly said, was to be a loan until Najib came up with a rationalisation for the payment. The hearing before Justice Datuk Muhammad Jamil Hussein continues tomorrow with Zulfaka's cross-examination. Top Glove Corp shares lost their footing today, sinking to below the three ringgit mark for the first time since last May, following target price cuts and a ratings downgrade against a backdrop of earnings that missed expectations. By the end of trading, its shares had tumbled to two ringgit 81, down by 8.2% compared to last Friday's closing price of three ringgit 6 sen. Analysts expect glove average selling prices to drop further, affected by factors such as normalised demand due to the progress of vaccination rollouts around the globe and rising competition from glove makers in China. CGS CIMB Research lowered its target price for the stock to 3 ringgit from 3 ringgit 48 previously but kept its whole call. It believes Top Glove's current valuations will be supported by inelastic global glove demand, its position as the largest global glove maker and its strong fundamentals. M Investment Bank Research cut its fair value to 3 ringgit 10 sen from 3 ringgit 77 previously, though it also kept its whole call. This is to reflect the group's improved environmental, social and governance outlook and strong net cash position of 2.05 billion ringgit. Meanwhile, Maybank Kim Eng downgraded its call to sell from hold and lowered its target price by 44% to 1 ringgit 68. Kenanga Research trimmed its target price to 3 ringgit 60 from 3 ringgit 6 cent previously while maintaining its outperform call. And MIDF Research cut its target price to 3 ringgit 23 from 4 ringgit 55 while maintaining its neutral call on the stock.
Bursa Malaysia's share price and foreign shareholding have fallen to their lowest since June 2020 as investors trade securities against the backdrop dictated by the global COVID-19 pandemic, which has influenced world fiscal and monetary decisions to support economic growth. The bourse regulator and operator's share price closed 0.8% lower at 7 ringgit 36 for a market value of 5.96 million ringgit. Meanwhile, Borsa's website shows that foreign shareholding fell to 17.2% in August from 18.1% a month earlier. Today's share price decline is in tandem with the broader market as investors take cue from factors including the US Federal Reserve's policy meeting this week, during which the Fed is expected to lay the groundwork for its quantitative easing tapering. As for the benchmark composite, the 30 stock FBM KLCI ended in the red for the seventh consecutive session, pushed down by the selling of selected heavyweight counters led by Syme Darby Plantation and Top Glove Corp. At 5 pm, the FBM KLCI lost 1.33% to close at 1,527.89. According to TA Securities' note today, further downward bias can be expected in the immediate term as technical momentum indicators for the KLCI continue to weaken following the correction resumption last week. It's that stronger evidence of a sustained recovery in the local pandemic situation will be key to strengthening economic recovery plays. IGB Commercial REIT's stock exchange debut saw its unit price slipping below the price of the institutional portion of its initial public offering of 71 cent today. The counter opened at 73 cent and hit a high of 74 cent. However, it slipped quickly to 70 cent by mid morning and stayed there for most of the day until the close. The IPO takes place amid a challenging office space environment, with supply expected to outstrip demand in the coming years. At 71 sen, the price of its institutional offering was notably lower than the indicative price of 83 sen set for its book-building exercise. The restricted offer for sale for IGB's shareholders that came with distributions in specie was undersubscribed by 21.28%. IGB commercial wheat's assets include Monaro IGB, IGB Anex, Centerpoint South, Centerpoint North, Boulevard Properties, Gardens South Tower, Gardens North Tower, and South Point Properties at Mid Valley City. As at June, its average occupancy rate stood at 73.4%, down slightly from 76.3% in the previous year.